Welcome back to Epic Your Life podcast, Creating Extraordinary. We are Carlos and Chantel Campos. Yes, today we are excited to be interviewing uh, another power couple, one of our legacy leadership couples, uh, Jabel and Christina Miller. We're super excited to have them. They are such a beautiful, uh, a beautiful example of unity and harmony and family. So welcome, Jabel and Christina. Glad to have you guys. Glad you're here. Welcome. Hi there. Hello. Good, good to be here. <laughs> awesome. So as an introduction, uh, we would love for you guys to just share a little bit about who you are, um, where you're from, what sort of your history has been, and uh, yeah, let let us get to know you for our viewers. Okay, I'll go first, then you can mm -hmm. take a few minutes. <laughs> I'm Jabel Miller, um, and Christine and I live in Libby, Montana, in Northwest Montana. Many previously Amish people would probably know where that's at. We are both previously Amish, and um, I grew up traditional, like old order Amish. Um, we did not have cars. We dressed very traditional, like the normal traditional clothes, and uh, did not have electricity, things like that growing up. Um, so yeah, I have lived in Libby my whole life. I was born and raised here. Um, I'm 30 years old currently, and so lived lived in this area my whole life. Um, and most of my family lives around me, around us. Um, I have eight siblings. And um, so I'm very blessed to have that opportunity. And um, my family, my, my fa like I should say my extended family has always been un very entrepreneurial and um, I grew up working with my dad and his brothers in our construction business. We build log homes and um, mainly is what we've done. And my dad also owns a, a Benton Dent grocery store um, that has now been expanded in the past years. So my family has always been very entrepreneurial, doing a lot of things, very busy. Um, and a lot of good things. So, um, yeah. Awesome. That's a little bit about the history of, for me. And obviously there's a lot of details in that, but I'll let her share a little bit. Awesome. Yeah. So my name is Christina and I grew up in Kentucky, um, Southern Kentucky. And I lived there for 21, no, 22 years of my life. So it's, was very much a part of uh, me growing up was, you know, the Southern culture. I grew up Amish as well. Um, I was New Order Amish. Um, so we were a bit more modern than Jabel was, <laughs> but um, yeah. Did um, you have cars? We didn't have cars. We, uh, we had like indoor phones, indoor plumbing. Basically we had all the you know, you had electricity, the That's modern right. conveniences, except like technology and um, stuff like that. So okay. um, and then I was Mennonite for two years um, in another part of Kentucky. Um, and then in 2013, I moved to Montana and um, I attended a youth event um, that the youth group out here at the time had put on. And so um, I ended up getting radically changed through that event and ended up staying here um, through, you know, an amazing series of events. I got a job and a place to live. And um, so, yeah, I lived out here for almost 11 years now. So pretty cool place. And I love, love it here so much. Um, this is definitely home. And um so Jabel, I met Jabel in, well, 2013 when I came out here, but we didn't actually start dating until 2015, I think it was. Yeah, 2015. 
So then we got married in 2016. Um, and uh, yeah, so then, um, let's see. I worked at a, uh, when I, after I moved out here, I worked at a bulk food store for, uh, which would have been his dad's store uh, for five years. And um, I actually taught school for two years in Kentucky. And before that, I helped my dad on our farm. Uh, grew up on a farm, still love animals and uh, farm life. So that's a big part of who I am. Love homesteading. Um, I'm an aspiring writer and author and um, look forward to continuing that um diving deeper into that, uh, in, you know, in the future. So, yeah. <clears throat> so good. I love that. And, uh, that kind of plays into, you know, what we want to talk about because you are currently writing your story. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so we'll look forward to that, you know, coming out for sure. I wanted to ask you guys a couple of questions. So, um, Jabel, you said that you grew up in Libby you were born and raised there, um, but yet you were previously Amish. So, so what was the transition like for you out of the Amish, you know, who led that journey and, and what, what did that look like for your family? And then Christina, I'd love to hear for you as well. Yeah. Um, so I was still pretty young. I was about 11, 10, 11 years old when that transition started to, to happen um so for me it was it was for me personally i was excited about it it was i didn't think too deeply about it i was just like hey i get to wear jeans now or oh i can you know listen to music or we're gonna drive cars yay yeah. <laughs> we can watch movies <laughs> things like that yeah um i didn't think too deeply about it but i know for <clears throat> for my my parents and the older ones in our family it was a very tumultuous time that whole transition just the, the because it we it wasn't the, the the typical type of transition where you left an Amish a traditional Amish community and you you started a life somewhere else right. it was our community my dad our my dad was the leader of the community he's actually an ordained bishop and it was our whole entire community that kind of it was a it was a years long process, but it step by step we kind of went through that process of walking in free in greater levels of freedom till eventually we started changing our lifestyle and getting power and um, or electricity and you know doing all of doing all things like that. I know it was a lot more difficult for my my parents to walk through and um, how does this all work with the, the Amish teachings and the 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 path of freedom that God was leading them on, um, and blazing really blazing a trail in that for, you know, many other Amish people to walk in. For so it community. was like, what's that? I said for a community. I mean, yeah. that's that's a very for unique. A and you guys so, are actually well known, yeah. right, for the place of freedom for. Amish to come and and you know experience freedom, right? Would you say that's that's yes. come well? I, I would I would say so, and and you know just I have to just honor my mom and dad's legacy in that of just walking, you know, taking the steps of faith and and just you know since the beginning, since um, my dad and his family moved to the community in 1990, 1992 started it there was always something different about it there was always a hunger for for truth and for more just spiritual things it was the spiritual things of god and and learning more about that <clears throat> and really the whole community was like family at the time so eventually more people moved out from the east and made the homes here and it became a more diverse place mm -hmm. but um there was always something unique and different there as far as a hunger and drive to always learn and always grow and to always you know find find out you know what god is actually saying in these certain things and so that just basically a hunger 
and a desire to learn and grow. So I was, I was actually, as I think about it, I was able to grow up in that type of atmosphere. And so it plays into where we are today, obviously a lot for sure. So, mm. um, but yeah, it was, so we, we would, people ask us, you know, are you Amish? Or are you not Amish? <laughs> um, my dad could give you the, the epic speech on that. <laughs> he had to visit that many, many times, but it's kind of, is we're very unique because like we never like left that place, but we transitioned obviously. So it's like, so we joke that it's like, well, we're still Amish. So like we never left <laughs> technically for you people who might be listening, who are actually Amish people and previously Amish and know how the system works they uh the church never actually put us in the ban which is excommunicated us because they, you know we were like our own separate community that didn't you know they couldn't uh we weren't attached. didn't know, didn't know how to didn't know how to deal with that we weren't attached <laughs> to the to the mainstream back east so right um so you was always like a, a a very progressive form of Amish then advanced <laughs> progressive form of Amish <laughs> <laughs> but no, the, well, it was uh this desire like there was this desire that you never wanted to leave who you were you never wanted to leave the 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 community and you never wanted to leave the lifestyle if you would um but then then we also realized there's actually things in the tradition and the religion that just really don't matter it's not about the outward rules and regulations that you can do and it, it, it's on matters of the heart That's and uh, my grandpa and my dad were forerunners in that mm -hmm. very much so and um that's kind of how everything kind of shifted even now it's <clears throat> so over the years there's been a lot of people who are uh searching for more truth or just asking questions they would find a safe place in Libby to come and just be for a little while. And whether they went back home or stayed, they kind of had the place to just kind of, you know, breathe a little bit. And even now there's um, a lot of people who have left the Amish um, come out and either visit or have moved out here with their families. And so um, anyways, that's, Probably that's a long enough answer, I guess. Just on that, like but. Christina, right? I mean, yeah. that was that was part of Christina's draw to. I mean, why right. you came to Libby, you even, right? Right, Libby. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I for sure wouldn't have stayed here if if I wouldn't have felt safe. And I think for me, like coming from an Amish community as well, and having been through persecution there in our um, Amish community and having seen what happens when, you know, uh, the leaders in the church excommunicate and um, how that, how they're treated um how they treat other people who believe differently, like mm -hmm. having seen that and mm -hmm. experienced what it feels like to not be sa feel safe. And mm -hmm. then coming here, you know, and being able to, process through so many deep things um so many issues in my life that I had never felt safe to process before was a huge deal for me like that was a big deal for me so definitely definitely a safe place for healing and uh, mm -hmm. uh just processing and growing that's awesome so, so good so then you got married jable wrangled this Beautiful woman. <laughs> he chased her down. Was that like a horse thing or something? Like, no, that's not Amish. Sorry. No. <laughs> Some cowboy stuff. <laughs> the Amish aren't cowboys. They're just good, yeah. good animals. He wooed so her with his voice. That's true. What's that? I said he wooed her with his voice. Oh. Right? <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. He, he was singing to her. <laughs> so the uh in 2013 mm -hmm. oh boy there's so much history you could go into but i won't for the sake of time um uh, 2013 
I was part of the youth group and a couple of, you know, my siblings, my older brother and others were involved as well. We did a youth event here in Libby. It was a really huge step for the community, major deal. We actually had a band come in and we built a stage. We had wow. an outdoor event and it was like a first time we did it here. And it was a like, um, these are super cool musician, musicians, they, um, amazing people. They came and did the worship at the event. And it was like, it was a really a stretch for, for the community to kind of go to that level of, you know, freedom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we did this event three years in a row. She came to the first one with some of her siblings. And um, that's how she came out here. And then she ended up staying and um, worked at my dad's store for a number of years. And then we met in, well, we didn't, we knew each other a while, but uh, 2015, after a Danny Johnson event, well, actually, before I went to the to Danny Johnson event, um, I had, like, asked her out on a date, <clears throat> and then she had to keep it secret for a week until I got back, because I was going to Dynasty for in San Antonio. And um, so that fall of November of 2015 is when we started dating. Mm -hmm. And then we got married in summer of 2016. So. Wow. That's a little bit of how we got started um, on that part of our mm -hmm. journey, so. And so then you got married and what did that look like for you guys? How did that, you know, coming from <clears throat> The previously Amish background coming into a marriage. What are some of the things that you guys worked through in the beginning of your marriage? I mean, I, I, I understand that there's, you know, especially experiencing new levels of freedom and what does this look like? What do we build from here? How did you come together in creating what you believe now? Do you want to talk about that or? Um, I think, well, one of the biggest things, I mean, looking back, I would say one of her biggest things was um, just struggling to communicate about, you know, intimacy and what that looks like for us and um, how to stay connected. Um, we always had, even when we were dating, we always had a desire to have more than what we saw from, you know, other couples that we were around. I don't know why we just had this, like, mm -hmm. not that they were bad people or anything. We just were like, we can do better. Right. And so we always had, like, this drive or this, like, hunger to to learn how we can, you know, connect better. And uh, I think, but then we also struggled with how do we, how do we implement, you know, how how do we how how can we be better? You right. know, like um we didn't really have resources or teaching or people mm -hmm. to talk to or mentors or even accountability or anything. Like we were basically on our own trying to figure out this whole marriage thing. Mm -hmm. And it was hard. It was really, really hard. Um I think the biggest thing was we were committed to each other yeah. and we faced some really tough challenges. Um that, you know, has the potential of separating us and, you know, tearing us apart. Um, I'm really, really thankful that we were committed to each other and we did have people who saw what was happening and uh, offered us help. And I'm really, really grateful for that. Um, and so mm -hmm. for, you know, for a while we there, we went on a journey. I would say we'd be, we would have been married for, I don't know, two years maybe. Um, and we went on a journey of just healing ourselves mm -hmm. and, uh, learning more about our identity and who we were as individuals and, um, just some really deep inner healing that happened. And it was really hard. It was, I would say that was, um, it was a while where we were, you know, it felt like we, we lived together, but we weren't really like connected very well right. but then when we were when we were at a place where we were healed 
we were able to come back together and, you know, continue to work towards unity and harmony in our home. So, so it sounds like both of you were pursuant of personal growth and developing your skill set, right? Um, right. Creating intentionality. Um, what would you say was the biggest factor that, that, that created that? Did you, did you, I mean, I know that you locked arms with some people who, who came alongside you during that season, but, but even locking arms with support system doesn't cause intentionality and it doesn't cause you to want to actually get to the next level. And like you say, you know, when you see the people around you, you know, there's something inside of you that wants to do better, that you know that you can, you just don't know how. So what would you say is it that the, the two of you have that created that intentionality? Um, for me, speaking for myself, that was always something, I, I believe that was a trait that I kind of, that we kind of grew up with. Because mm -hmm. I saw that in my extended family, yeah. whatever level it was at that time, that be as it may, but like, um, I I feel like that was a part of, like, our family was always like the ones pushing forward, the ones, the, the trailblazers, ones, you, know, you know, creating the new thing that everybody else was scared of, or, um, and then as it grew older and teenagers and and in 20s um you know like i went with my my uncles a couple times on on uh like danny to danny johnson events and personal growth seminars like my uncles were really into that like in their in their early years um they would go to a lot of these things always doing marketing stuff and doing you know learning and 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 growing so i had that i had that um example kind of in that area mm -hmm. and i feel like i kind of took that on for myself personally and i did i i can see that in my own personal life looking back um i always had that desire to to you know whether it's a struggle i was dealing with something i wanted to overcome or whether it was something new i wanted to learn I think at that time I kind of had a really, I was kind of playing in a really negative mindset of like, I should be doing this better. So I have to go and learn this instead of like, you know, now it's obviously a lot more positive, but <clears throat> there was either way, there was, I think there was always that little bit of a drive there to like pursue, um, to always, um, not pursuing the next shiny object that will fade away, but always not limiting yourself and always just learn wanting to learn more and, mm -hmm. and becoming more um, successful in that. So yeah, not being, yeah. Always having a, a, a level of openness to that more than normal. Yeah. Hunger. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So then that hunger led you to where we met you guys, which is interesting. Right. Huh? Yeah, but it, I think in between there, there was there was uh, something that you were pursuing together, and and your journey of you know that led to destiny, right? Right. So share with us a little bit about that. <clears throat> so that would have been that would have been quite a that would have been quite a few years. Well, so. If when we were, so in 2021, we were actually on our dream vacation in Cancun. And um, it was a time when we were really struggling. Like we were just like, man, we need to just wa wanted to go away, just get a reset. And um, kind of, we were in a place where we felt like we wanted more, but we're just kind of, kind of coming up empty. Like, how do you move forward kind of type of thing. And um, so anyways, on that, on that vacation, we got a message from Jesse Kaufman. I did actually, he messaged me and that was the first I, you know, heard about him. Your phone's about dead. No, keep on talking. And, um, he asked me, you know, if, if this would be something we'd want to be a part of. And, um, you know, I didn't say anything to Jable right away. 
Um, but because we were on vacation and we didn't really want to like process through all that. So anyways, when we got back, we, you know, continued, I, I continued messaging with him. And then, you know, I talked with Jable about it and he was not very sure about it. Very, you know, hesitant and stuff like that. But, you know, for, for me, I was really excited because I was in a place where I really wanted to know what my purpose was. I wanted to know why I was here. What am I good at? what how can i what do i bring to the table like just if there's more to life than just like you know for me like just kind of bringing feeling like i'm just floating around out there not really knowing what my talents and gifts are and you know just not really know what my purpose is and well, what is our purpose you know what what are we how are we what is our purpose together and not really knowing, you know, what direction to take, you know, kind of feeling confused because he was a different person than me, but we're married. So shouldn't we be going in the same direction? Just like so much kind of like confusion in my mind about, you know, and at the same time, like not having anybody to talk to or process these things with was really hard. So when Jesse asked us for the first time, you know, if we wanted to be a part of it, that just really like spoke to me and was like, felt really like kind of a leap. It was kind of like a reignite, like an ignition of hope. Like, man, like mm -hmm. this could be something that we can um, tap into. And this could be something that I've been praying for. Yeah. And and in the midst of that season, there was something else that, that you were, your identity was stirring with, you know, in regards to having children. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, that, that was the other thing is. Well, I'll share, uh, I'll share a little bit about that. There's, um, we hadn't been able to have children naturally, so that was a big struggle on its own. Like you were processing processing right. through all that mm -hmm. during the during our vacation time in 2021. Um, we went to Mexico, and then like that was when she saw the little babies and the little kids running around and homeless, you know. On the streets and it would just it touched it touched our hearts more deeply especially christina and that kind of birthed this idea of well what if we looked at adoption mm. what if that would that be an option i was already kind of thinking about that for a little while um she wasn't really there yet but we you know that trip kind of kind of triggered that in us is like what would that look like and then as we, as the days went on and that just became stronger and stronger and to where I was like, Hey, let's look into this. Let's, let's see what, what we can find out about this and stuff. So. So I didn't realize that that Cancun trip was, was the, the pot that stirred your connection with Epic, your life, as well as your adoption. <laughs> right. I didn't know that that was tied to that both. trip. That was awesome. Yeah. It was both, yeah. A lot of things were birthed on that trip. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. So it, that was a really cool trip. And it was like really life changing in a way for me. And it really brought us to a deeper place of connection. And um, I was literally like one day, like he said, we were in Cancun. I was like literally one day I was sitting in our hotel room. And I just had this like vision of, um i just all of a sudden i just saw um us as being parents to children with different nationalities <laughs> and it was so real that i just started crying i was just like he was out he was doing something else and it just was all of a sudden it's just this bright light that just like it's like when you have a, a a window and the blind is closed and you can't see out you don't know it. that's how i felt like for a long time like I didn't know what was, you know, what was going to happen with, with that part of our life. And so it just always kind of felt kind of like dark. I didn't really see anything specific. And that day it just like that blind just snapped up and it was just like this light, just, it was just like clear as day. Hmm. And so. So yeah. hope on, on several levels. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes, very much. Mm. Very much. The answers. The answers came. <laughs> yes. So that was the 
that fall was the time we got was the the time we signed up for the connection DNA um, at the time. And in December, we hired our adoption consultant to bring that process, get that process started. So like, yeah. And then uh, a lot of right. stuff happened that fall. And mm -hmm. so, yeah. So that that makes... began a, a journey, a couple of journeys. So, so what did you experience, right. you know, in the midst of it, what are some of the the victories and the triumphs? Because obviously, we're looking at a beautiful baby girl right here, yes. and we're looking yes. at a beautiful intimate marriage that the two of you have. So, I would love for you guys to just kind of, you know, share with us like what were the victories and what was it that that caused um, <clears throat> the breakthrough for you over the last couple of years? Yeah, yeah, beautiful. There's probably too many to mention here. <laughs> we could talk a long time about that. <laughs> but if I, I was thinking about, actually just today, I was thinking about my first ever call with Irina, because at that time, you know, she was doing all the strategy calls and stuff. And <laughs> so I was talking with her and I said, uh, but I don't think we can do this because we're adopting a baby. And I don't know if we have the funds to put into this, Right now, we want to save all our money. And then she said that, well, what if what you learn in this process could actually help you be better parents then, could help you be prepared. Wow. Wow. So that actually like gave me a very different perspective. And um, then we did it. Like we signed up and um, that began a process of creating deeper connection for us, intentional connection not just something that, you know, happened or whatever. It was very intentional. Mm -hmm. And um, we started out by doing, you know, our Epic 30, um, which at that time was called Sanctuary Practices. And um, we were a little overwhelmed because there was a lot of information um, that Jesse had given us. And we were like, man, how are we going to do this? Mm -hmm. Is this even possible? Um, we already have so much that we're thinking about. And so, but we just took it one step at a time. And we started out by doing sanctuary practices for a week. And um, it it connected us to the extent that we were like, man, we can do this another week. Let's, let's, uh, you know, let's, let's keep going and see what happens. We can't lose here, obviously. So, um, <clears throat> and then, so we did that. And then we started pushing play, you know, on the videos. And little by little, it was like, I, I feel like our minds expanded. Like we were able to have capacity for greater, uh, greater things and uh, growth started happening. And there was just like little sprouts, you know, things that kept us going. Like, um, well, I think the biggest part for us was just, we all of a sudden we realized that we didn't have to work to stay connected anymore. Like it was just like, all of a sudden it was just happening. Mm. Wow. And um, before it had been just a struggle, like to stay connected and we'd have to like really work at it. And um, he'd be gone all day at work and, we'd come, you know, he'd come home and just, you know, it just felt like we just had to work so hard to stay connected. So this process really brought us together. Mm. That's awesome. So what other kind of levels did you see victory in, Jabel? Yeah, I, so... Yeah, was <clears throat> one thing that this really helped us in was just even with the adoption process, which is learning how to communicate more um, effectively, not being all in your head all the time and just communicating with with people. Um, yeah, like as far as <clears throat> since we got started with Epic Your Life, Man, there's there's just been layers of things that, you know, we just kept pushing forward and things come up, we process through it. Just layers of triggers that we work through of, you know, why we believe this or why we believe that and realizing a lot of those beliefs were keeping us from connecting with each other or they were causing, there were cycles, they were causing cycles in our life that were very unhealthy mm -hmm. and just 
learning to recognize that and and then choosing to um, shift our focus to until the point comes where you have now created a new cycle. Yes. Um, and then, so yeah, the, obviously the uh, teaching about cycles and and all that is all over the content. So yeah, that's that was our experience is just really, um, yeah, just so many, so many things of just learning and growing in opposite of, of how I, I learned about growing up or I was taught by others, whether it's growing up or, or otherwise somewhere else, is that, you know, it's really about freedom, discovering freedom and be, becoming strong in your own identity so that you can bless others through that. And um, yeah, just for me, it just felt like lots of layers and then you work through one thing and then you go on and then keep you keep moving and then you come across another thing and then you work through that. So, but it doesn't happen in, unless you're like intentionally seeking it out. And I feel like we were doing that. Um, yeah, it took a little bit probably to get us to yeah, anyway, I'm not sure what I was going to say with that. Like, but a, so, like a train getting going on the tracks, yeah. right? Once it starts rolling, then it's like full right. steam ahead, right? So, I, I, yeah. see the, I see the three C's uh, showing up big time for you guys uh, in your life, in your business, in your family. Um, yeah, I was going to say, like, so it's interesting then to see you because you started in 2021, correct? And uh, right. really committed to it. Like Chantel said, the three C's of connection, which is confidence, communication, commitment. You're working on those things. But then we invited you to level up in a, a level into leadership, legacy leadership, and become a part of a higher level in, in the community. And you still hadn't <laughs> finalized your adoption. So there was still like, it's so interesting. Like there was higher levels of commitment financially and right. And like, it just seemed like there was not less, but more. So Christina, I want to hear like how you're, we're thinking like your perspective um, about mm -hmm. this. Like, what did you think when you saw this? Like, oh man, we're trying to do this adoption. Now you want us to level up and be a part of the legacy group. Like this, what was your thoughts initially? And then obviously you guys pulled the trigger. Look where you're at. <laughs> but tell us about that transition too, to leadership. Well, I think it was, uh, I don't know that I even thought about it that much as far as like, I think by that time we were like, we recognized that the process helped us so much that we didn't want to do without it. It actually like, um, the thought of, you know, adopting our baby and, uh, knowing how much it helped us through all the emotional ups and downs and, you know, just the roller coaster and even the support, like for me as with the women, like that was a big part of, um, of my journey, even last year, uh, with, you know, going through that. And, um, I think for me, it was, I, I recognized that I needed something solid to come back to. I needed to have, to know that I had, the the tool of uh like my epic 30 to come back to was actually very um it was how would you say it, it felt like something solid like in a world mm -hmm. of like so many uncertainties and mm -hmm. so many unknowns and stuff it was good to have something solid to come back to mm -hmm. so that was that was like for me to like think about you know legacy leadership was not something that I, I was like, I mean, sure, bring it on. <laughs> she was ready. You know, we can only move forward, so. Yeah. Now, Jabel, you were experiencing, right, the legacy leadership, but there's more financial uh, responsibilities there. There's more financial responsibilities to the adoption, paying for those fees, the attorney, all those things. Like, But yet, what happened in, in your life and in your, in your um, finances and things, too, as well? Tell us about that. Right. So I think the first time we did that was easier than the second time. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
but because I remember that first conversation and um, about you were, you presented it to us of like, hey, this is what we're doing and we want to present it to you guys. Do you want to be a part of it? And it was a, yeah, it was a big step. Um, I just didn't think about it too much at that point. Um, but looking back, I was, I'm kind of amazed because the, the chunk of money we had to pay for the adoption, we had to save up for the adoption and then um, the, the mentorship package. And there was a number of other things too that was happening at the same time. Um, I think we had just bought a new car also <laughs> that fall, or like a brand new car. Yeah. And um, there was a lot of things. And looking at the finances, you would have said that there's no way we're going to do this because we got to do, you know, got to take care of all the other stuff first. But that I remember when we sat down and we talked about it, we were like looking at each other and was like, I don't want to talk about this tomorrow. Let's, let's, I don't want to make a decision tomorrow. Cause you were like saying, you know, you don't have to make a decision now. You can think about it a while if you want. I'd realize it's kind of a big step. But we, but so I just made a decision there and to move forward because we wanted. We were still hungry to uh, to do okay. that, okay. and um, it was a big stretch. Mm -hmm. um, but it also pushed the ceiling further up to where it was like, okay, <laughs> now it now the top is off. Now we have to create we have to fill that space we have to we have to now get our butts moving to to get this working so it really motivated us at least the first part <laughs> to uh yeah to keep going and and so it's been it's been amazing so um... we also we also you know started uh keeping shabbat um uh -huh. having a rest day uh -huh. and that was the other thing that was so impactful oh, for us was that we started doing that and it felt like we were actually making getting more financially but we were working less <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. and so a quick just a quick testimony um when we started with the adoption um and the, this was also when we had signed up with connection dna we made a five thousand dollar investment i had to make for the uh for the uh, consultant to get their package that would help us with all our profile books and everything. One year later, in, in spite of all the charges we had, the, the stuff we did, one year later, after buying a new car, we had $50,000 in savings for our adoption. Wow. <laughs> um, so like I don't know how it happened, but <laughs> I it's probably credit to a lot of things. I don't know if you get all just kidding. I don't know if you get all the credit, but no. You did <laughs> the work. Listen, money no, is spiritual. It's, it's a right. spiritual it loss. Is. And then yeah. So that was a just it it didn't feel like we were gaining ground necessarily during the time, but then we looked back and was like, how did we do this in the past year? Like we we signed up for these two packages. We had all these adoption fees we had to pay for the home yeah. study. And, and in when the middle of that we bought a car and Went so it was traveled, but we just kept moving forward. We we didn't stop. That was the main thing. Mm -hmm. So we didn't stop. <laughs> so then we we called you to level up again because it is a yearly thing, and you're like, okay, and we're we're like, plus we want you to be partners with us, part owners of Epic Your Life because of your leadership skills and your commitment, and dedication. So then now it's that, and then comes destiny. And then what happens? It's super cool to see your progression. Like it doesn't get less. You guys just keep becoming more and more extraordinary. Now you're writing a book and you started a, your business back up and it's just amazing. So uh, Christina, tell us a little bit about that. Well, I think uh, that, oh, I just had, a, I literally just had a thought and I was going to say it, but it just went away. Um, if, our mindset is always to not limit ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we create our own limits. Mm -hmm. Oh, what I was going to say is uh, once we knew what we wanted and we made a decision, that's when the flow started. So good. Yeah. And um, I think that's what we learned too, is like making quick decisions. Yeah. And if it's not the right decision, I mean, you, then you just change direction. You just go another way. 
So I think that was a huge part of like, even with the adoption was we made a decision, we knew what we wanted and we just, you know, went for it. And that's when it felt like everything just started flowing, you know, and just the provision happened, everything just opened up. Yeah. And so good. So continually making, you know, progress and moving forward, um, making our life a, you know, continual forward motion, like a, like a flowing creek, you know, or river, you know, water, when it just sits there, it just gets stagnant and stale. It doesn't benefit anything. Right. But if you, if you're actually continually flowing and moving and mm -hmm. it, it creates life and refreshing and it blesses, you know, other, other people and, you know, whatever it may be. So, so good. So you're, Christina, again, about your book, and then you're also speaking now at ladies' events, like incredible, and Destiny. So share us how all that kind of came to pass. His phone died. All right. I think that the biggest thing with, um, you know, with my book and, you know, speaking, I think it all, for me, it all comes down to mindset. And um, I realized even on a deeper level that having a baby doesn't change who I am. It doesn't change my desires, my assignment, um, who I'm made to be. She expands me and she actually like helps me grow. And so, um, I think that, you know, having the opportunity to, you know, be an author, because that was always one of my dreams and pursuing that and um, making a, you know, making a way for that to happen has actually been very um, life-giving for me. Mm -hmm. And so speaking, you know, as far as speaking hasn't, that was never my dream, but I also realized that um, it's also a skill and uh like we were learning about communication and um you know writing is my it's kind of my comfort zone that's that's like where i like to be yeah. so but what is what is growth in comfort you know mm -hmm. and so stretching myself allowing myself to grow in my communication and um learning how to articulate my thoughts in words you know as i as i speak is that's actually a skill and um, I also realized that it's not something that we're taught. Like, we're not really taught in our culture how to speak or communicate well. And going through the content, going through the process, you know, that we have the last couple of years has um, helped me to communicate in many different ways a lot better. And I'm still growing in that, and I probably will continue to. But... Um, so speaking at an event is, um, it's, it's definitely a stretch, but I want to do it because I think it will, it will be beneficial to my growth and yeah. who knows, maybe it's something that I will be doing more of in the future. Cause I like to talk. So why not? You know. <laughs> That's awesome. That's good. That's good. <laughs> I love that so much. And, um, and so Jabel, <clears throat> this year has, has looked radically different from you um, as far as business goes, right? Um, so what happened for you in business? So this this year I, uh, I expanded my, my to, ex well, I didn't have a business before. I had sort of had a business, but I, I started a new business, design and drafting business as well this year. Um, just everything that was, there was a lot of transition that happened the past year at my, where the place I was working at. So this year just felt like that was the right decision to do. Um, and it was just another step for me to grow into that, to, to take into that. Um, one thing I was really working on and processing through is, you know, the whole concept of money and finances and success. What does that look like? Um, and um, 
yeah, just even processing through a lot of those, some of the mindsets and different things that I needed help with. Carlos helped me with that. And um, yeah, so I started a, a new business in March and uh, it's been going now for about, well, just about a month and a half. So it's been going pretty good, I would say. And I'm, I'm, I, I love the, um, what I love about it is that, it, you know, it, it just, it's, how do I say it? <laughs> It's more of a, for me, it was, I just, the best way I could describe it is, is it was the right decision for me to, to make in what I was doing at the, at the company, um, to just branch out and start my own business. So, um, yeah. And as I love, I love being a business leader, a businessman and kind of making my own decisions in that realm. And so that was a, yeah, still working. I'm still currently kind of working on that improving that and um developing that out but i'm really excited about it so yeah yes. so, so good well you guys i just want to thank you for joining us um i think one thing that everybody who gets to hear your story and gets to to come alongside and and your journey is to see that you're always pushing past your comfort zone yeah. you're intentional both of you are very intentional in pursuing <laughs> your next level and we adore you we're so grateful for your leadership yes. the way that you lead by example and the way you go after it everything that's in you even when it's scary that's even it. when it looks uncertain even when you don't have the skills, you're like, okay, so how can I get the skills? Because I know I want to do this. And um, we love that you make decisions and you take action. Yes. So super, super excited to see what this next year looks like and watch your business grow and flourish and, you know, get to uh, spend some time with baby Destiny. She's right. just such a victory. For those of you who are, are really big on results, there you have it. It's right there. This beautiful couple, seeing them so intimate, so connected. It's real. We've spent some good quality time with them and we know how much they work on it. And and they are on track to do six figures in their business very soon. I would say in the next first five or six months, mm -hmm. it's super powerful to see this man launch and go into action. And then to see a, a powerful woman, both of them being great leaders, but speakers and trainers, but now an author, as uh, Miss Christina is writing a book. So you guys stay tuned for that. And then probably my favorite part, that little one right there, Destiny. I miss her so much. <laughs> She's such a joy. I'm so honored and blessed that they would call me uncle to her yeah. because it's real. I love her. She, she's a, a beautiful, beautiful gem. And we're so glad and so blessed to be a part of your both of your lives. And so you guys can look uh, j and Christina up there on like a... Facebook and Instagram and stuff and uh, soon to have websites coming and things going too. So stay, stay tuned. tuned. They're, yep. they're leaders, movers and shakers. For now so. you can see them occasionally on uh, school.com yes. backslash Epic Your Life. That's our private platform where we, uh, we love to lo learn and grow together, right? Yes. Awesome. Yes. No, thank you. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate you guys. So good to have you. See you next time. There you have it. Yeah. It yep. is um, super powerful to have amazing guests on our podcast. We'll see you next time on Epic Your Life podcast, Create an Extraordinary. Thanks for being here.